I doubt, I doubt that your boy Ronald Koeman is gonna last um, the season. I'll be shocked. And if I was advising Barcelona, I would advise you not to have Koeman in charge before that Benfica game because December eighth is something different. December eighth is something did it different. But I think you know, um, especially if Barcelona wanted the embarrassment of not making it through the, the groups or whoa, 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 or even finishing bottom, they could have um, sack him. ASAP, man. Um, so what's what happens? Because I'll be shocked if he sees out the next few days, or rather the season. So there are a few names that have been out there. We're going to just look through the names and just you know, give an argument for um, um, the those guys that exist. So first off, we have um, Ten Hag. So I think Ten Hag, I think, makes... See, here's the thing. Ten Hag makes the most Barca sense. So I don't know. But yeah, he makes the most Barcelona sense in the sense of the way that he plays, his philosophy for Ajax, and he's a philosophy merchant. So passing, total football, keeping the ball on the ground, lots of off-the-ball movements, very intricate. So it's almost as if it would be like a great fit. But my pushback on that is, are Barcelona in a place in which that will work? Because, yes, you want to play good football, but I think what is more important than good football is actually winning. So the whole point that Valverde was sacked and Setin was brought in was because, oh, Valverde doesn't play the pass away and so forth. Setin will take us back to the pass away. And then H2 said, what's up? We still don't know where Setin is. I think he, he went back to selling fruit. So for a Ten Hag, it, the danger is you bring him in. Oh, the football is great. It's intricate. It's nice passing football. But will it lead to results? Because what matters more than anything especially in this business, is results. This is still a results-based business. So Ten Hag would be good, but my issue with Ten Hag is that he's a philosophy merchant and he is he lives and dies by that philosophy. And that was seen. And as good as Ajax were, and Ajax were amazing, I think it was in that 2019 season. They were, they were amazing. But I just felt that he showed poor management skills in that second half against Tottenham, where you are winning, you are controlling the, the game, bring on a, a, a defender, um, hold the fort, and instead of and, and then actually try and bring a plan B to see out see out the, the the game. So, quality coach, very good coach, but is he the right manager? Especially Keith, is he the right manager for um, um, Barcelona at this time? The next one we have here is this boy. Avi. Disney Plus, Peter Pan, Robin Hood, Beauty and the Beast, Pinocchio, Lion King, Crash. Who's that? Easy. So, um, this is a Disney Plus hire. And Barca fans have got to be very, very careful with this. You see, I still love PLO. I will always love PLO. I will always love PLO. And I think, no matter, you, you cannot say, Anything to me that will tarnish the image of Pelo, apart from Pelo coming out and saying that he's racist, there's nothing to me that will tarnish the legacy of Pelo. But for some people, him taking that managerial job may have just sort of, you know, made people look at him a different way. And I think that, you know, Barcelona fans have got to be very careful that this isn't going to be history repeating itself. Because when you look at Javi, think of Pep Guardiola, one of Barcelona's finest students coming in and then being a full success. Massive difference. When Pep Guardiola came in, he came in with the best generation that La Masia has, has ever had. And he also came in with a player who is amongst the most talented players we've, we've ever seen in our history. He came in in Spain's most talented generation in their entire history. So it was the right man at the right time. Keeping at the right time. Javi coming into this would be a disaster. There's no Messi. There's no Iniesta. There's no Puyol. There's no Dani Alves. There's no Jam. Oh, there's, 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 there's no him. <laughs> he doesn't have him. So it would be a very, very for me. It's the wrong hire. I think for Javi, his his time will come. It's not. I think Javi should only be hired when Barcelona have that great, amazing player and a great squad, a great, a really quality team. What Barca need right now is a manager with experience. An experienced hand. And I think it's with an experienced hand that they'll be able to now say what's up. So for me, I think this for me would no. 
I think this should be a big, massive no. A big, massive no. Bringing in Javi screams of sentimentality. And the key thing is that we know what Javi is. He's one of the most influential, impactful midfielders of his generation, maybe in the history of football, in terms of how he was a system that was one of the most dominant things we've ever seen. You don't want that. Even if it shouldn't be, you still don't want that legacy to be sold by him coming in and struggling to try to teach Luke De Jong how to play for football. So that's the real. So the next one we have here is... Um, actually, let's go for this one. So next on the agenda is... Roberto Martinez. No. No, no, no. This, for me, no. No. This is dangerous. This is dangerous because people will say, oh, Roberto Martinez is very attacking, he's very offensive and so forth. F similar to the whole Javi thing, but in a different sense because this is similar to Javi because I think that you need a particular kind of a manager. But Martinez is way more experienced than ja than Jabi is. But the thing with Mar Martinez is international football is very different from club football. Very, very different in, in indeed. He's done good things with Belgium. They've not won anything. You know, they've not, they've not won anything. Um, and again, you look at that game against you look at that game against Italy. Belgium had People will say it was Titan, but really, if you look at, on it on paper, we say, oh, Belgium should have won, won, won this game. And Mancini tactically outclassed him in that game. Martinez coming in, who has a very offensive attacking style, I think would be wrong. Again, wrong man, wrong time. Because I don't think that he'd be able to come in with where Barcelona are right now, the players they have at their dis 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 disposal, and the key thing, get results. So for Martinez, it's the wrong high. And I think this is where Barcelona have to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. understand what this guy is. He is a very attacking manager. And I and he does not really gotta have really a plan B or a plan C, really. So I think Martinez is a guy who can do pretty good with quality players. But if he doesn't have all the players at his disposal, does can he go into his management toolbox and still grind down results? No, he cannot. So for me, Roberto Martinez, that would not be a good hire. Um, and then lastly, we have this one. Antonio Conte. Here's the thing. Out of all the choices... He's the best choice. So out of, obviously, I mean, there are all the names I've been throwing. I think I saw freaking Ateta. That was, was, was mad. I think um, the guy out or the guy that's could the river, river, river play. That one is there, but that's maybe a little bit risky. You know, coming from Argentina to now um, Spain. This, out of all of them, is the best hire. Now, the pushback is he's, he's a pragmatist. And he is the complete antithesis and opposite of the Barcelona way. Are Barcelona really in the... Do they really have the luxury to try and find a manager who can play the Barcelona way? Do they have that under that, that luxury? I'm not sure whether they do. The thing with Conte is... What he has over the other guys is that he can manage. He has a plan B, he has a plan C, and he can take a team... And, like, and grind out results. Because for him, more so than most of the guys that were listed, his first thing is results. How do I get the results with this team? And I think that when you look at where Barcelona are right now and the situation that they're in right now, they need to get results. So if you're a Barcelona fan, especially like a Barcelona purist, this would be, be like, oh my God, the kind of football that will be, be, be played. You know, like, is he going to stifle the dev develop? Will he stifle the development of an answer Fati, stifle the development of a Ricky Push, maybe a Frank de Young and so forth, blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, Barca has to realize the situation that they're in right now. You don't have the funds right now to go and get a Haaland there, to go and try and look at a Musiala, try and get the best, the best, even a Delicta or so forth. 
So I think what you just need is you may, you can call it maybe a, a stopgap. Somebody to be like, let's come in, and he is an amazing stopgap. Look at what he did with Inter Milan. Look at what he did with Chelsea. So he can come in in a short space of time and deliver something and deliver results. So for this situation right now, Conte may be the right guy. So I think if you're a Barcelona guy and so forth, you have to decide what you have to decide what do you want? Is your priority to be we need to play well and play the Barcelona way? If that's your priority, Ten Hag is your man. Ten, Ten Hag is your man. If your priority is, I don't care how we play, what we look like, or so forth, results. Win. Be successful. Stop Real Madrid and Atletico from winning this La Liga and try and make a run in the UCL. Well, no, scratch that because Conte is used to the UCL. No, try and actually win games and actually try and win this La Liga title. Create a winning team. Then Conte is your man. Conte is your man. So it's really all dependent on what you want as a Barca fan. Because look, you can have the flips. I mean, look, the best case scenario, like the ideal scenario is Ten Hank comes in and wins. That's the best scenario because he will come in, play really good food football. He will develop Ansafat. He will develop all of the, the young players. And if he's winning, that is like the dream, dream scenario. How likely is that to happen? I don't know. It's risky. It's risky. Coaching in the area de Vizie, and Ajax is different from coaching in La Liga with Barcelona when you're up against the likes of Real Madrid, let's go Madrid, Madrid, Bilbao, and so forth. It's, 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 it's different. So, Rebas fan, depends on what you want. Like that vid, subscribe if you're new, comment below, stay black, one love.